once BMW, Saab and Audi challenged the establishment. Now they are the establishment and they face a challenge. Merkur XR4 Ti from Germany. Back in 1985, Ford in America introduced a new sub-brand under Lincoln Mercury called Merkur to compete against premium European sports sedans, especially BMW. Using models from Ford of Europe reworked to meet American regulations, the end result were two cars with a name no one could pronounce and a failed marquee after only four years. This is the story of the Ford brand known as Mercur. This is my old car. Test drive XR4 Ti at a Lincoln Mercury Mercur dealer. Thanks for the suggestions to review the XR4 Ti, which in turn led me to reviewing the entire Mercur brand. Also check out my new Patreon page at patreon.com slash my old car. When one thinks of car brands that were embarrassing failures, my bet is many would put the Edsel brand near or at the top of that list. You never saw a car like the 58 Edsel. Named after Henry Ford's son, the Edsel was expected to be the car of the future, but its low quality and hideous looks killed it after only three years, and in today's dollars, a $4 billion loss. But this wouldn't be the last time Ford tried to start up a new brand. In the early 80s, Ford was seeing a continued rise in American sales of European brands such as Mercedes, Audi, Saab, and most notably BMW. And they saw the trend of young urban professionals, known of course back then as yuppies, abandoning established American luxury brands such as Cadillac and Lincoln in favor of sports sedans from Europe. The idea of creating a new brand at Ford to compete with European cars came not from America, but instead from Ford of Europe, or more specifically, from Bob Lutz a former BMW executive who was Ford of Europe CEO at the time. His idea was to import Ford sports sedans to the United States, making only the changes necessary to meet American regulations. Many at Ford thought it would be more cost effective to sell these new models as Lincolns or Mercury's, but Lutz had bigger plans, instead arguing that a new brand would help the European Fords appear more upscale than they could under Lincoln or Mercury. It is essentially the same idea that Japanese automakers would later do themselves with Honda creating Acura in 1986, and Toyota and Nissan creating Lexus and Infiniti in 1989. The new brand name for these European Fords became Mercur, which is German for Mercury. Although the name Mercur may have sounded European, it really only did when it was pronounced correctly, and of course most Americans couldn't, instead of pronouncing it as Mercur, which undoubtedly hurt some of the cachet the new marquee was intended to produce. And unlike the future Japanese luxury brands, the Mercur would not have its own dealerships, but instead be sold in existing Lincoln and Mercury dealerships. The first model to be imported to America as a Mercur started with the Ford Sierra XR4i. The Sierra first launched in Europe in 1982 and came in two and four-door models, but it was the two-door model that was chosen for import to America as a Mercur due to its more sporty nature and modern, at least for the time, aerodynamic shape, and therefore was considered the better option against BMW. The cost? $50 million or over 125 million today. But the name Sierra wouldn't work in America, with GMC already using the Sierra name as a trim level on its trucks, and Oldsmobile using a differently spelled but same sounding name with a cutlass Sierra. So they decided to just use the XR4i portion of the name that came with the Ford Sierra. However, the Mercur model name changed slightly to XR4Ti, with the T indicating turbo, to designate its four-cylinder turbo engine that was already in the Thunderbird, Cougar, and Mustang. Tighter emission standards in America meant the Sierra's 15-year-old V6 wasn't an option, and the turbo's 170 horsepower, at least when paired to a manual transmission, was better than the V6's 148 horsepower, which definitely helped considering the stronger bumpers and side impact beams required to comply with American regulations added 280 pounds. But the XR4 Ti had an uphill battle to win over customers thanks to its unusual look. Although it was a three-door hatchback, the XR4 Ti had both a C and D pillar, as if one of the windows was intended for a door that wasn't there. Even more odd was a two-tiered spoiler in the back, which maybe provided a bit of improved performance, but honestly, probably more annoyed owners by obscuring their rear view. Stop drooling. You know you want it. There was also the lackluster response from the 800 Lincoln Mercury dealers who agreed to add the Mercur brand. They took on the expense of marketing the XR4 Ti as a separate brand, which sold for over $40,000 in today's money when they could get higher margins from their Lincoln models. The XR4 Ti did make Car and Driver's 10 best list in 1985. With positive press like that, Ford was hoping for up to 20,000 units sold per year, but by 1986, they only sold just under a total of 26,000 units. 
Now those are sold as Fords in the UK, but here it's sold as a what? Mercure. Is that German for bad marketing concept? No. Ironically, the brainchild behind the whole Mercure idea, Bob Lutz, left Ford in 1986 to begin a 12-year stint at Chrysler, where he helped produce the Dodge Viper and the LH sedans. And if you've watched any of the videos from my other channel, you know he also had a hand in the development of my favorite car, the Plymouth Prowler. Despite never being sold outside of the US or Canada, an XR4Ti was modified for racing duty and competed in and won several motorsports events in Europe. The learnings from those events ultimately helped create the Ford Sierra RS500 Cosworth in 1987, a significant upgrade from the RS Cosworth. With only 500 copies made, its sole purpose was to make it unbeatable on the track, with a larger turbocharger and intercooler among its many upgrades, making 224 horsepower. With the Mercure brand having only one model for its first two years, Ford finally was able to import a second model from Europe in 1987 for the 1988 model year. This model was the Scorpio, which kept the same name as a Mercure as it was as a Ford in Europe. This five-door hatchback was intended to provide a sportier alternative to Lincoln's Continental in town car and compete against larger European sedans from BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Saab, Volvo, as well as a short-lived marquee that may make a good future My Old Car episode, the Sterling. But with pricing between $53,000 and $60,000 in today's money, for a car that looked a lot like a Mercury Sable that was sitting in the same dealership, the Scorpio was a hard sell. To help boost sales, they ran an ad campaign guaranteeing the Scorpio would hold its resale value the same as a Mercedes 190E, but it didn't help enough. Ford hoped for $15,000 sold per year, but sold less than that in the first two years. By 1988, sales continued to be well under projections, making the XR4 Ti look slightly more conventional by trading out the double spoiler for a single spoiler didn't really help either. But more importantly, the poor exchange rate between the US dollar and German Deutschmark kept pushing up the sale price. The Mercure name simply wasn't catching on, so before the start of the 1989 model year, Ford stopped marketing them with the Mercure name and just referred to them as the XR4 Ti and Scorpio. By 1989, to stay in compliance with American safety regulations, both the XR4 Ti and the Scorpio would have needed redesigns to include either airbags or automatic seatbelts before the 1990 model year. Because of the low sales of both cars by that point, and with the Mercure name already having been dropped, imports ended for the XR4Ti in early 1989, and for the Scorpio later that same year. Although the imports to North America ended in 1989, the Ford Sierra and Scorpio continued production and sales in Europe. Now more than ever, there is only one Ford Sierra. The Sierra there was offered in multiple body styles, with the XR4i matching the look of the Mercure XR4Ti, but also with a separate three-door hatchback design that had a more conventional three-roof fillers instead of four, used for the base model, but also on the high-performance RS Cosworth model. The Sierra was also available as a five-door hatchback, and by 1987 was also offered in four-door sedan and wagon styles, the latter two better known in Europe as saloons and estates. Production of the Scorpio also continued in Europe after the death of the Mercure brand. Unlike the Mercure version, which only offered a five-door hatchback, the European Scorpio also had saloon and estate versions. This changed in 1994 with a second-generation Scorpio, in which the hatchback was dropped. The second generation shared some inner workings with its predecessor, but the look of both the interior and exterior were radical departures from before, with many thinking it had become Americanized, and therefore, of course, much more hideous looking. Back in America, with so few XR4 Ti's and Scorpios ever sold, seeing one today is a rarity, although those who still have one may now be trying to preserve them even more, as 80's cars are becoming increasingly more common at car shows. More as a novelty that somebody actually bothered to keep it, as opposed to the car actually having any real value. But like any rare, and for the most part, unloved 80's car, maybe in another 20 years, who knows how valuable they may someday be. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. Get me out of here. <laughs>